Let's install and configure Duik. Of course, the first step is to download Duik. But before, don't forget to donate to help us develop free and open source software. So let's click on the download button for Duik. There are several ways to install it. Basically, you have to extract some files from the zip archive you have downloaded to copy them in a predefined folder in After Effects. There are two ways to do that. If you're an administrator user on the computer, you can install the script for everyone at once in the install folder After Effects, the usual one for the version you like in the scripts folder, script UI panels. You can unzip and copy the Duik files here. So you're going to copy the files from the script UI panels. There are several files. I'll explain a bit later why there are so many files. But to begin, you just need to use the Duik Angela file. So let's just copy this specific file. I'm ignoring here because I have already installed it. But this is the first way to install Duik for everyone on the computer, if you're an administrator user. If you're not, you can install it another way, which is even simpler, but it will be available only for your user. In the File menu scripts, you can use install script UI panels in After Effects. And now you just need to pick the file. So of course, you first need to unzip it. And now you can select it to install it for your user in After Effects. I'm not doing it here because I don't want to replace mine. Once you've done this, you have to close After Effects to quit After Effects to open it again. And after having starting it again, you can find Tuik and Hera in the window menu. Let's open it. The first time you open it, you may have this dialog, which asks you to check the box, allow scripts to write files. Let's click open preferences to get to the right preference panel in After Effects and check this box, allow scripts to write files and access network. Duik needs this because it needs to write the files of the icons displayed in the user interface, and it needs to access the network just to check if there are some updates available. Now Duik is opened, you have to choose the language to be used in the user interface. There are multiple languages. This list is going to evolve as we're translating Duik. Select the one you need, and Duik is ready to be used. Let's have a look at the user interface of Duik. So when you open it, you get to a home panel listing all the sub-panels available, which are the same as all the tabs on top, and a donate button. And of course, important, the help link where you get to the comprehensive documentation, the user guide of Duik. This is where you should go as soon as you have any question about Duik or any issue with it. So, the tabs are, the first one is the open cutout panel with meta rigs, which are complete amateur for your characters. The second tab is the bones panel to create and manage the bones, armatures for specific limbs. The third tab is the links and constraints panel, which has a lot of tools to control properties and constrain their values. For example, the auto rig, the connector, the key morph, and parent or transform constraints, and a lot of tools. The controller panel contains what you need to create and edit controllers, animation controllers, which are in the composition when you animate. The automation and expressions panel has a lot of tools to handle expressions and automate animation, like loop something, swing, blink, add a random motion, and the famous cleaner. The animation panel contains all you need when you're animating, not just only character rigged with Duik, but anything in After Effects you're going to animate, you may use the animation panel. The camera panel with a few tools and general tools subdivided in four tabs, composition, layer tools, text tools to rename and search and replace, and a few tools for developers for scripting and maybe expressions. There's also this common line interface panel to access really quickly all features of Duik and a notepad, which I'll explain a bit later always available here on the top right corner. On the bottom right corner, this icon shows the sanity status of After Effects and the project. It runs a few checks regularly to make sure your project and your After Effects are sane. Again, a donate button, and the very small button on the bottom left corner 
has a few links to, for example, report bugs or request features, edit the settings of Duik, which opens the settings panel, uh, a link to access the web page where we manage Duik translations for the UI. Here you can contribute to the translation of existing language, but we can also add other language if you ask for it. We can translate Duik in as many languages as you wish. And the hub button opens the online comprehensive guide. So this is the, the user interface of Duik and how tools are sorted. As there are a lot of different sub-panels like this, you may notice that sometimes there's a specific panel you, you'd like to have at hand at every time because you use it a lot and keep it as a dockable panel in After Effects as independent from the Duik and Hera main panel. This is why you have many files in the zip archive you've downloaded of Duik. If you have a look in the script UI panels folder, all these different scripts are actually standalone panels of Duik tools to customize your workspace in After Effects. For example, here I have already installed them all, so I can, if I need, keep the controllers panel at hand. Here it is. And I can dock it anywhere. So the Duik and Hala panel contains everything and other uh, just sub-panels of Duik. Uh, this, is, this may be very handy. Another one I, I like a lot is the Notes panel. I very often keep this panel docked somewhere in my interface because these notes are very useful. Let's have a look at the settings of Duik. On the bottom left button, click on Edit Settings. So you can change again the language if you wish. We've already seen it when installing Duik. You can change the location of the settings file. This may be useful. Let me just show you. By default, it is in your Documents folder. So. Here for me, under Windows, I'm just going to my Documents folder, where you'll have a subfolder named Duik, where Duik keeps all its settings, and you'll find also the translation files for the user interface. So this is the settings file. When you change the location of these files, you can, for example, use a shared folder to share the settings between several people and computers. You can also maybe choose a synchronized folder like with Dropbox or OneDrive if you wish to have the same settings across all your computers. You can change the highlight color of the Duet panel, uh, select even your own one if you wish, or the good old orange from CS6. There are three different modes for the user interface. The rookie mode for beginners, uh, the one which is already selected here, uh, is the, the easiest to use. Uh, there are labels and explanations, but the panel is a bit bigger than the other modes. For example, if I, if I use the expert mode, let me show you, the UI will be much smaller, but there's less help. There's no labels on the buttons. So the panel can be much, much smaller. This, is, this may be very handy. Uh, but there are no labels nowhere. There are no help on the panel. So you have to know Duik quite well to use this user interface mode. Uh, but it's, I think it's very useful to have a small panel as this. The standard mode is something in between. Uh, it's still quite easy to use, but takes less room than the rookie mode. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the rookie mode. The next button switches to dev and debug mode. Um, this may be useful, for example, if you have an issue with Duik to show more errors and uh, help us uh, debug what's going on. You can finally deactivate the home panel. The home panel is the one which is shown when you open Duik with the list of all tabs. But if you deactivate it, Duik will be much longer to load. And finally, an update button to check if Duik is up to date. Let's apply these settings to switch back to the rookie mode. So these are all the settings in Duik. Nothing revolutionary, but uh, some may be useful, especially the interface mode and maybe the color. I do prefer this purple. I'm going to show you the notes panel, which is very useful once you know what it does. It's always available on the top right corner of Duik, or you can install the dockable panel, the standalone panel, if you use it a lot. It's just actually a simple text editor, but the selector on top of it is very useful. Let's start with the text file mode. 
In this mode, I can input any text in the in the in the notepad, and this is automatically saved by default. If you didn't change anything, it is in your document folder. You'll find a gweek notes txt, which contains these notes, the text you input in the gweek panel. You can also open and save these text notes somewhere else. So this is a general text, which is available always when you restart After Effects. It's loaded automatically. No matter what project you're working on, you have this general text available. What's interesting is that there are other modes. For example, the project notes here. So this will work only if I save the project, if I have an open project. Let's save a temporary project. And now that I have a project, I can add specific project notes which will be saved with this project, not in a text file anymore, but inside the project file. The thing is that I now have notes for this specific project, let's call it project A. And if I save a new project, which I call project B, I can change these notes. Let's say it's project B, and these are other notes. And these notes will be updated according to the project. So there's nothing in the project. It's only displayed in the panel. But when I open a new project, I can load the corresponding notes, which are saved inside the project file. If I open the other project, I get the notes. Even if the project has been saved by someone else on another computer, it's saved in the project. By composition, it's the same, but the notes are attached to a specific composition. For example, here, let's add some notes for this active composition, which I'll call comp A. And if I create another comp, which will be comp B, I can just input other notes for this composition B. And this way, when I select a composition, I can get the corresponding notes of the active composition. This is very useful. The notes are also saved inside the project file. So I have the project notes, the composition notes. This is very useful to add explanation, tips uh, inside the project and the composition to help people which are going to use your project and your compositions. I use this a lot. So this is the notes panel available as a standalone panel or on the top right corner of Tweak.